Hey, what's going on everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to do circular transitions with Swift and Xcode. Now we are actually gonna use a thing that's already done on GitHub, but you can always program it yourself just by looking at those files. And sorry if I sound a bit boring in my video, it's because my throat really hurts right now and it's kind of hard for me to talk. Anyway, without any further ado, let's get started. All right, so first thing we need to do is actually check out a GitHub page right here. So I'm gonna open this up. This is a GitHub for radial transition underscore Swift. Now, of course you can program this whole radial transition and get to, to your liking yourself, but I don't wanna do that in this tutorial. It's just gonna be way too long. So I'm gonna take these files that are right here, and this is going to make it a lot easier for me to implement inside of my app. So I'm going to download the zip file, open it up, head over to the radial transition underscore Swift, master and inside of this we want the radial transition source as you can see here so we're going to go down here to xcode create a new xcode project and this will be a single view application I click next and our product name i am just going to call mine circular trans and then we have language will be set to swift and our devices will be set to universal this transition is a universal transition click next and create and now let's go down here and I'm just going to implement these files that I have for my radial transition source. So I'm going to take these three files right here, new folder with selection, and I'm just gonna call this our transition files. And now we can take these transition files, just click and drag them into our project like so. You can say copy items if needed, finish. And then this will copy the items inside of your project like so. And now implementing these files into a project is very easy as well. You can actually read through his thing right here and it shows you how to, for push, simple, simply use this. For pop you, simply use that to enable swipe to back or to disable, whatnot. But one thing you'll notice is that in his examples here, he says self.navigation radio push controller and it says second view controller nib name. So if you don't know how to work with nibs, I'm going to show you how to use the normal storyboard. You can of course go to this project and you would know how to implement nibs if you wanted to. But I'm going to use a storyboard because that's what I'm most familiar with. So let's head back over to our project, make this a bit bigger, and let's head over to our main.storyboard. So right inside of our view controller right here, I'm just going to keep that, but I'm going to add a navigation controller like so. And this will allow us to navigate through our controllers easier. And then we can go ahead, delete this root view controller, then right click or control click and drag from our navigation controller right here to our view controller, and we're gonna say root view controller. And this will make this navigation controller control all the other controllers that we link with that. Now we can also take this arrow and make the navigation controller the initial view controller. Now we also want to add one more view controller, so I'm just going to click and drag that right into my scene right here. This is going to be the view controller that we move to. And let's I will get to the naming of things in just a minute. But now on this main view controller, we also want to add a button. So this is going to allow us to transition to the other view controller. So we have this button here. I'm just going to add a few constraints. Center vertically, center horizontally like so. And then I can also open up my assistant editor and I'm gonna right click or control click and drag from this button over to my view controller. This is going to be an outlet and our name of this will just be BTN main. You can of course name this whatever you want and connect. Then we also need to add a function to this view controller. So I'm going to right click or control click and drag from our view controller over to our view controller dot Swift. So right click or control click and drag over to our view controller dot Swift and this will be an action. Now this action will just be our, our BTN action like so. And then we have the act, make sure the connection is an action and then connect. Now inside of this action, this is where we're going to handle the transition. So let's go ahead, go down here and we're gonna say var second view controller will be equal to, and this is going to be our self dot storyboard dot instantiate view controller with identifier. And then the identifier of this view controller, we actually need to head back over to our main dot storyboard and right inside of this view controller right here. If you head over to the identity inspector right here, we can go to the identity and this will be the storyboard ID right here. So I'm going to call the ID of this called second VC like so. So now if we were to access this, we need to head back over to our view controller right here, and we're going to make the identifier second VC, like so. And then right now it doesn't really know if that's going to be a UI view controller, so we need to say as exclamation point a UI view controller. We are casting this as a UI view controller. We're telling it this is a view controller, don't worry. 
Now we're going to go down here and we're going to say self.navigationcontroller.radial. And for some reason, this is not popping up with the rest of the function. So we need to actually go up here to our transition files right here. I'm going to take all three of these and just move them right out and say finish. And for some reason, this will work perfectly, but the way we implemented it before doesn't work perfectly. So now we should be able to access what's inside of these files. So let's head back over to our viewcontroller.swift. And inside of here, we're going to say self.navigationcontroller dot radial push view controller like so and it's wanting us to push a view controller or a view controller that we want to move to in this case we want to move to our second view controller so we can say second view controller like so we can set the duration i'm going to set this for one second right now that way we can see everything that's going on our start frame is going to be where do we want this to start i want this to start from our btn main dot frame so i'm going to make it start from that frame so I'm going to go over here and say transition completion and say nil. So now if we were to actually build and run this right now, we should get that circular effect going on. But we wouldn't actually really see it. If we head over to our main.storyboard, you can see that these are both white, so we wouldn't really see an effect. But let's click on the second view controller right here. Click on the right side right here, and we can click on this view controller, go over to our attributes inspector, change the background color, and I'm going to change this to just a teal color. And then we can build and run. And now if I were to click this button, as you can see, it grows out in the circular motion over to the second view controller. Now it does have this back button right here. Now if we click on that, it's just any normal thing, but we're gonna change that right now. So let's head back over here and we're gonna go up here to our file, new file, and this is going to be a Swift file. Click next, create, and now this file will be our second view controller file. So I'm going to actually change the name of this. So I'm going to say second, VC, that'll be my second view controller dot Swift. And inside of this, we're gonna say class, and then we want this one that it has the name and the super class. So the name of this is going to be second VC. The super class of this will be a UI view controller, but first thing we need to do is say import UI kit, like so. And now we can say the super class will be UI view controller. Now inside of these properties and methods, we want to set up a few things. So let's say view did load. So as soon as the view does load, we want to say, we want to create a function for this back button. So if I click this button, you will see that there's this back button. So we want to create a function for that. We can click back right now, but we want it to be that circular motion backwards. So let's head back over here and I'm going to go into my view did load and say self dot navigation item dot left bar button item. So we're going to change the function of this back button right here. So let's go back and we're going to say will be equal to and this is going to be UI bar button item and then open parentheses and this will be our title style like so. Our title of this is going to be whatever you want it to be. It's going to be either uppercase back or lowercase back or whatever you want to put in there. The style of this will be a UI bar button item style dot plane. Our target will be equal to self. This means that we're going to edit the view controller itself. Now for this last action, we actually need to create a new function. So I'm going to say func simple pop open parentheses. And inside of this, we want to create a sender and then colon. And this will be a UI button like so. And then close off the parentheses, open curly bracket, enter close curly bracket. And inside of this, this is going to be our action that when we click that back button, it's going to do a circular transition back to the original view controller. So we can say self dot navigation controller dot radial pop view controller. And then we can actually delete everything in here if you want. You can edit the duration in the start frame, but you can also do that in the file itself. But I'll explain that in just a second. So let's delete everything inside of that. And now we're actually just calling that function. Now inside of this action up here, we can just say open quotation mark, close quotation mark, simple pop colon like so. And right now the second view controller dot swift is actually not hooked up to our main dot storyboard. So let's head back over to our main dot storyboard, click on the second view controller right here. And we need to head over to the identity inspector. And we're just going to do the class and set this equal to second VC. So now this file, everything that we put in here is going to edit this. So now if we were to build and run this, we can click on this button, it transitions over, and if we click back, it transitions over like that. And also, in a normal view controller, you would actually be able to swipe to the other view controller. So let's head back over to our project, head over to secondvc.swift, and inside of our view did load, we can say self dot navigation controller dot enable radial swipe, like so. Now if we were to build and run this, you can click on this button here, it moves over, and we can swipe to the other side. 
so we can swipe over to the other view controller. So click on that button, swipe back. Now if you want to edit any of these attributes that are in such as the radial pop view controller, you can head over to the actual files themselves and just change whatever you want. So we can add the radial push view controller and change the duration of this and the start frame of it and other things like that if you want. Now if we head back over to our viewcontroller.swift, let's say I want the start frame of my button to be actually a CG rect and then open parentheses, and right here is your x and y values. And our x value, I can set this equal to our self.view.frame.width, like so. And then this will put it in the top right corner. I can set my y to zero, my width to zero, and my height to zero like so, and if I were to build and run this, you can see I mean, I clicked this button here and now it's growing from the top right corner. So you can really pick anywhere you want for this th circle to grow out of when a button is clicked. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to hit that like button down below. And if you wanna see more tutorials like this from me in the future, be sure to subscribe. Thanks again, and I will see you in the next one.